Many long nights have I waited. Special guest star, Andy Griffith.
The first half of the Jim Neighbors Hour is brought to you by Marlboro Filter Cigarettes. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro Country. When you're moving 300 head of cattle through strange territory, it can happen before you know it. It can happen with a flash of heat lightning or a little wind blowing the wrong way at the wrong time. flavor is. Come to Marlboro Country. Hey everybody and uh, welcome to the show. I guess y'all know by now that this is going to be what they call a variety show. A variety show, you know, is where you get a chance to show off your versatility. You see, with the Gomer Pyle show, you could only have problems with acting. But on this show, you know, I can have problems with acting, singing, my dancing, you know, really spread it around. So even though I am kind of nervous tonight, I think you're going to like it because we've got some mighty fine people helping us out. And one fellow I'm sure you all know because he's just about the best comedy actor anywhere. And even though in our first number it did look like he was practicing up to be some sort of sex symbol, <laughs> here he is, my old Marine Corps sergeant and my very dear friend, Mr. Frank Sutton. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Frank, you look more nervous than I am. Well, let's face it, Jim. Uh, I'm an actor. I don't know anything about being on a variety show. But you was a real big hit in the dance. I never did know you had such pretty legs. <laughs> See, I made a fool of myself already. Food, you know that? You see, Frank, Ronnie's not nervous. Of course. Come on, get with it, sweetheart. Don't call me sweetheart. Especially when you're wearing that suit. <laughs> How else am I going to sing and dance my way into the people's hearts? You try dancing your way into my heart and I'll break your legs. <laughs> Come on, Frank. Let me teach you everything I know about variety shows. Now, the girls' dressing rooms are right down the hall. There's a blonde down there that wants to meet you. She used to see you when you were a movie star, and she thinks you're real too. She thinks you're real too. I always feel kind of funny calling the fellow coming out here next a guest. It's, uh, well, it's sort of like calling your daddy a guest. I'm not that old. <laughs> I didn't mean that he's old, it's just that he's been, well, as good as a daddy to me, and he gave me my very first job, which was pumping gas in a Mayberry filling station, and uh, then he helped me get a job as a private in the Marine Corps, and if it wasn't for him, I don't guess none of this would be happening here tonight. Don't go blaming me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I guess one of the best friends I've got, Mr. Andy Griffith. What were you looking for? Those eight girls that ripped your clothes off. <laughs> well, this is it, huh? Yep. Yeah, it. It's nice, isn't it? Kind of fancy. Yeah. Bigger than Quonset Hut. <laughs> yeah. You nervous? Nope. <laughs> 
You remember my first day on the movie set? Yeah, yeah. You remember I was a little bit nervous? A little nervous? He had one word and forgot every syllable of it. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Yeah. But do you remember right in the middle of all the trouble I was having, you stopped everything and you came over there and you put your arm around me. You remember what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, if you don't straighten up, you're fired. <laughs> you didn't do it. <laughs> well, anyway, the shoe's on the other foot. Tonight, it's your show. You folks are in for a big surprise tonight. That's right, yeah. You tell them all about Danny, and I'll go get changed. Okay, 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 okay. Well, <clears throat> you see, what it is, there's a, there's a sketch coming up. And in it, I get to, uh, I get to do something different. See, I get to, I get to play a sheriff in a small town. <laughs> but it's, it's different. It's a different, different kind of thing. It's not the kind of sheriff that wins friends like uh, Sheriff Andy Taylor. It's the kind who wins Academy Awards like Rod Steiger. <laughs> After all, you can't keep playing nice guys forever. <laughs> I still don't know why you arrested me, officer. Violation of Civic Statute 506, littering the town plaza. Well, all I did was throw my gum wrapper in that muddy old swamp. That is the town plaza. <laughs> now, uh, in accordance with the law, it, it is my duty to inform you of all your rights. Go ahead. I just did. <laughs> oh, shut up, boy. I've run into your kind before. I think I'm just gonna hold you for Sheriff Andy himself. He's the meanest and toughest sheriff in this here whole state. There's Sheriff Andy now. Get up, boy. Get over here. Hurry, hurry. Now you reach for the sky. What you got your hands up for? I told you he was tough. <laughs> you two. Not you, I mean the dog. You want me to feed him, Sheriff? No, they're eating out. Run on down to the university and divvy up a demonstrator. Excuse me, Sheriff, but Shut I'm... up, boy. That new prisoner? Yes, Sheriff. Get a confession out of him yet? Well, not yet, sir. I just picked him up. I haven't had you. Boy, you puss put around, don't you? <laughs> What's the job? Uh, litter in the town plaza. And he had his windshield wipers going the wrong way on our one-way street. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna book an innocent-looking boy like this on a dumb charge like that, are you? Now, that's just what I said, officer. Go find an unsolved murder. We can pin on him. <laughs> hey, why? Yes, sir. Why are you out? Stop by the tailors and see if my sheet's ready. <laughs> Did you say murder? That's right, boy. Why'd you murder? Murder who? That hadn't been decided yet. I didn't murder nobody. You got an alibi, boy? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You can't have no alibi. We ain't found no crime yet. <laughs> but don't you worry, boy, don't you worry. Last time we had a murder trial in this town, it ended in a hung jury. At least that's comforting. That's right, they declared the man innocent, so I hung the jury. <laughs> now, while we're waiting to figure out just who it was you murdered, why don't we just get your traffic violations out the way? But a chewing gum wrapper's All right. right. Guilty of speed. Fine, twenty-five dollars. Phone car last year. twenty-five dollars for destroying the evidence. Now that's fifty dollars. <laughs> hey, boy, you won't just make a check payable to me. Our city hall is too corrupt to trust with all that money. <laughs> I just like to get back to my school. Another twenty-five dollars for attempted escape. <laughs> 